22 minutes before eight here on the program. My next guest is an entrepreneur responsible for many early stage investments in developing countries. Rakesh Wahi can be attributed for founding the business channel CNBC Africa, Forbes Africa, Lancaster University in Ghana, Tech One Global, and an array of education institutions in three different continents. He joins us now in studio to talk to us about his biography, Be a Lion. Dare to Dream and Live Fearlessly. I love that title. Uh, good morning, Leanne. It's so good to have you. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much. Talk to me about the title. I mean, normally that's probably one of my last questions, but I'm going to ask it as my first question <laughs> because I just think it's so catchy. It's so good. Why a lion? What, what, what was behind that? I guess the uh, lion represents uh, being on top of the food chain and uh, it's very metaphorical in the way I've used it. Uh, it's about uh, achieving success in whatever you do. Uh, be on top of, uh, you know, your game. It doesn't matter what you do. So whether you're a musician, uh, you know, whether you're a presenter on television. Yeah. So whatever you do in life, an entrepreneur, a sports person, it's about being on the top of what you uh, achieve in life. And so that's where the title came from. And it, it was, you know, from a trip that I made to the uh, zoo in Johannesburg in 2012 with my wife. And we were walking through the enclosures. And, you know, as always, I stopped by the lion enclosure and I said, I found the title for the book. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. There's something majestic about lions and incredible the way they car carry themselves. Now, you, I mean, you've got such an interesting life. It's absolutely unbelievable when we look back to where you started and where you are now. I mean, uh, growing up in India um, and in the deserts of Rajasthan, joining the military, having a life-changing experience there, and then moving into this business world. But let, let's just talk about you as a young boy. You know, what was, what was life like? Well, I guess I went to a boarding school at the age of 10. And, uh, you know, like any other, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess private uh, uh, boarding school, like, you know, the Eatons and others, uh, the Dune School was a very uh, exclusive uh, school to have gone to. And... Uh, uh, you know, it was at the foothills of the Himalayas. Uh, a lot of my foundation came there. Uh, enjoyed being in a boarding school and some of my greatest friends and peer group comes from there. And, uh, uh, you know, my father was in the military and, uh, you know, most kids try to follow what their parents do. And uh, so it wasn't a surprise when I decided to actually join the military. Yeah. And I joined the National Defense Academy, which is India's premier institution. Uh, joined the Corps of Engineers after that. And, uh, you know, just continue to follow my dreams in terms of what I wanted to do. I got a BSc in physics, well as at the NDA, uh, went on to join the Corps of Engineers, specialized in, uh, you know, demolitions and uh, did everything that came around and <laughs> then went out and, uh, you know, set up India's second base at the Antarctic. Yeah. So it was a wholesome experience. Uh, in the Antarctic? Yes. So you spent time in the Antarctic? Uh, six months. Well. I, six months in yes. that freezing weather? Yes. So built India's second base there, a place called Maitri. Amazing. And so it was quite a, quite a life-changing experience. Well, you talk about life-changing um, and just from reading reviews and, and, and going through the book a little bit, there was <coughs> a, a moment in your life where, I mean, you were basically almost dead for 24 hours. Yes. And this was one of the big life-changing things. This happened to you in the military. And then you realized you don't ever take life for granted. Let's, let's do things. I mean, how did that moment change you? I, I guess, you know, uh, everybody uh, has a certain personality. And I was quite an introvert until then. And I realized after that, that, you know, your life could just switch off, uh, you know, with a click of a button. And uh, so decided to then, you know, just pursue everything that I wanted to do. You live once and, you know, you've got to uh, go out and, uh, you know, do whatever that comes to your heart and achieve success in what you do. So uh, when I was at the Antarctic, I decided that, uh, you know, uh, the army wasn't uh, everything that I uh, wanted to achieve in life. Yeah. I had a conversation with my family. And when I spoke to my father, he said, son, you're going to be a general. I was one of the youngest officers in the history of the army to get the uh, Vishesh Seva medal. And uh, so he felt that, you know, I was giving up a fantastic career. And he asked me, what do you want to do? And I said, I have no idea. And the only thing I know is that uh, the army is no longer for me. And I actually want to move on and try something new. Yeah. So I think uh, that experience uh, opened up a whole avenue of opportunities around the world for me. Yeah. And I just decided that, you know, whatever comes to my heart, I will try and uh, go out you know, and try and achieve success in whatever yeah. I dream to do. Which is, which is incredible because, I mean, every step in your life you learn lessons. And, I mean, you, spoke, you speak about the lessons you learn in the military and what an unbelievable leader you become by being in that. I, wanna, I don't want to focus too much on that because uh, due to time constraints, I want to get into your interest in Africa because, you know, being the son of the soil in, in, in India, uh, being born there, your family's there, and yet you've done so much on the African continent. Why the fascination with Africa? Uh, I guess, you know, I hadn't been to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa until 2004. 
and uh, so the northmost point of uh, the continent was Egypt, where we had tried to do some uh, investment banking transactions. And I came in uh, 2004 to try and see whether there was an opportunity to set up a business news television station. And uh, and when I came here to South Africa, you know, you have these uh, perceptions about Africa when you haven't been here. Yeah, oh, and yes. most of these are caused by, you know, very slanted uh, reports that you see in most Western media. And uh, my uh, perceptions were no different. But having come to South Africa, you see the infrastructure, you see the quality of people, the institutions. And I just fell in love with the continent and I said, there's something we're going to do here. Mm -hmm. And all our investments now as a family are all focused around Africa. That's amazing. I mean, you've got so many operations. It's not only in South Africa, but as you say, the reach around Africa is huge. I, I might be wrong on the numbers, but you've got something like... 22 different businesses? No, we got uh, three businesses in three 22 businesses countries. In 22 countries. Thank you for yes. correcting me. But I mean, that is huge. That is huge when you look at it and predominantly operating. I mean, I know you're in Dubai, but predominantly operating on the continent. That's What's correct. it like doing business on the continent? Because so many people talk about and emphasize the difficulties of doing our business in Africa. You know, I think... Uh People need to be focused on the continent and take this as a long-term opportunity. It's not doing things in the short term. Uh, most people who have originally come, you know, about a decade or two decades ago, they came in here focused on resources to take things out, all short term. Our view is long term on the continent. And I think if you're patient, you'll be able to achieve success here. And I think that's the core of being in Africa, is being patient and looking at things in the long term. And there's a lot to do here. You know, yeah. the population is expanding. You're going to have 2 billion people here over a period of time. You've got the youngest consumer economy. So, you know, it's all there for you to, uh, uh, to go out after. Yeah, and everybody says that. It's not a, uh, you know, that's the thing. That's what people say. And education is something you're investing in as well. Unfortunately, there's no time to get into that because uh, we'll have to let people read the book on the education drive that you're on with the Lancaster University. But just one bit of advice as you leave us this morning to an entrepreneur because it, it's not as easy as you're making it sound because you do fail a lot. Um, but it's how you pick yourself up. What's that piece of advice? Well, I guess, you know, People need to, or young uh, uh, folks that are getting in uh, to the world of business, have to, you know, focus on the long term. You have to be patient. Uh, most youngsters today want to get money quick, get rich quick, and there's no shortcut to achieving success in in this world. So I think people have to look at it in the long term. Uh, do your research, plan well in advance, build credibility because credibility is something that doesn't come overnight. It's a lifetime. Yeah. And finally, I think it's building interdependence with people. You have to surround yourself with good people over a lifetime, uh, build trust with them. And that's basically what's going to see you through. All right. Rakesh Wai, thank you for coming in. Good luck with the sales of the book. And, uh, and more importantly, good luck with spreading that great word. And you can get that, uh, the book in bookstores around the country. It's called Be a Lion, Dare to Dream and Live Fearlessly. Perhaps a great gift for this coming Christmas. You never know. That might just inspire someone to reach their full potential. Thank you for joining us and all the very, very best. Uh, thank you very much, Leanne. Thank Absolute you. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure.